it out. It's good. Like yeah. qu that quarantine haircut. I'm mm -hmm. not about to protest I need a haircut, but I definitely do need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's that's what's up. Three, two, one, two, one, bro. What's up everybody, I'm Mike. I'm Nick. We're starting off fast and in a hurry because we gotta get you this top 10. <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting for this one. You've been waiting for this one. This is the top 10 tech builders. Deck and bag builders. Uh, we, bag we, threw, builders. we threw bag builders in here because one, there's less bag builders. And then two, it's like, they're essentially the exact same thing. Yeah. So essentially what a deck builder is, the first deck builder uh, was Dominion. And essentially what a deck builder game the first is. one that mattered anyway. No, I think, I think it was the really? first, at least the first one. There's that, just that, someone the, that's hot on BGG right now. It's like, actually it was this. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> Probably, cool. Probably, right? One of the first. So. Uh, and so what a deck builder is, is you usually start off, now again, it differs between deck builders, of course, but generally you start off with a basic deck that has different cards, and then depending on what you're doing in the game, you're constantly getting new cards. So yeah, each yeah. hand you'll have like five cards, and you can usually buy new cards, yeah. and then all those cards go to your discard pile, and then you draw five more cards. But then eventually your deck runs out, so what you do shuffle is you up. shuffle your discard pile, and, and that becomes your deck, and so your cards are constantly cycling through, and the cards you bought then cycle through. And you're and you're sort of hoping to be able to build like good combos. Yeah, you're hoping exactly. the white cards all come together in the same hand to combo off each other, do fantastical things. Exactly. You're improving your lot in life as you exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah. And then a bag builder is the same thing, except for usually you're taking like little chits, little cardboard chits or something like that, or wood and stuff like that, and you're throwing them into a bag and then you're drawing them out. Hoping but essentially the it's the same thing as drawing cards, you know, yeah. and so. Bag builders and deck builders, we both really, really like this this yep. mechanic uh, as a whole. Um, and so we want to do our top 10 deck builders because it just felt right. It just felt right. Uh, we're not going to Also because our patrons, they, they voted for it. Our patrons <laughs> decided what top 10 we're going to do. Guess what? You can become a patron today and decide what top 10s we do. Get on that Patreon. Patreon but yeah, so they chose this one, so we're doing uh, deck builders. Indeed. So really cool. But yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it, eh? Let's get into these top 10 deck builders right about now. <laughs> All right, so our number 10 is a game um, from Cool When You're Not, or Simon or Come On, or I don't know what the call them nowadays, but nonetheless. Simon, we're not changing again. Yeah, Simon is fine. Um, but nonetheless, it's a game called Xeno Shift. This is kind yes. of like Starship Troopers themed, where you have these yeah. big, nasty alien bug things, They're and you're terrifying. all working together to try and essentially not even necessarily win, just to s survive. Sort of survive uh, waves. Like waves. Like literally, that literally comes in waves. Yeah. So there's there's a couple of versions of Xeno Shift uh, Onslaught and Dreadmire, yeah. right? So either one can work for They're us. They're basically the same. You can even most. play them together. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, basically you're dealing with waves of bugs and creepies, really and gross, just all sorts of jacked yeah. up. It's none of it's happy. Uh, it's never great. And you're just sort of trying to hope to survive, like you're hoping to not kill your base. Uh, the cool thing, the reason like we really like this one is um, it's got like all the kind of classic things of deck building. You're you're buying cards throughout to improve mm -hmm. uh, your 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 hand and be able to do more stuff. But one thing that's really cool is this is a cooperative game that feels, it's one of the most like truly cooperative feeling games, yeah. uh, regardless of mechanic, because like I can gift you cards, yeah, you I can, can use just... cards on your stuff and like you can pass things around. So yeah. like you're really trying to deal with uh, this threat together because you might have a really bad lineup Just of the way the cards come you. out, yeah. I might not be so bad, so I can help you out. So it feels very much like a team yeah. effort. Because everyone has a different part of the base. Like Mike's guarding like the armory, I'm guarding the laboratory. And essentially there's gonna be a wave of bugs and depending on which wave you're in, there's more or less and they're stronger or, or um, squishier. And so you have a wave, and then you essentially make a wave of your stuff. It could be like, yep. this is a trooper, this is like a sniper, and you put them in a certain order. order. can matter. And Anytime. then basically you flip over the bug, these two fight, whoever wins stays, whoever loses goes away, and then it goes, Bush, and it goes forward. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly going like, do, 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 like this, and you're essentially trying to outlast the bugs in that time. But it can't be like, oh, you really need this bomb? Here, take this bomb. Now Mike has that card. It's not, he doesn't then give it back to me. He then has that card. Yeah. So it's really cool, and then you have this like kind of 
market of different cards you can get, different troopers, different um, like weapons armor and, and all like armor stuff. Your people. Which is cool, but the nice thing is, is when you buy a card, unlike a lot of deck builders, you immediately get that card. Yeah. A lot of times when you buy a card, it immediately goes to your discard pile and you have to wait for it to shuffle through. This yeah. time you don't. When you buy a card, you can use it right away, which is really, really nice. A lot of deck builders don't do that, so it's nice to kind of have that twist. It's a bit different, yeah. Yeah, and if you like tough co-ops, like really hard co-ops, Play Xenoshift. It's really fun, great deck building, really cool art, of, um, just really difficult. There's a lot of variability too because you won't always have uh, all the same weapons no. from game to game and stuff like that. So it's very cool. Yeah. Um, one I would, like always want to play more, and every time I play it, we're like, man, this is really fun. Yeah, it's, it's a good game. Yeah. yeah, it's really fun, and it has a, kind of those different twists about getting those cards and really like getting cards for the greater good. Like you might not even buy this thing because you need it, but you know someone else does. Yeah. Uh, which is like a really cool way to go about it's doing a cool. deck builder. Uh, so that's Xenoshift hour number 10. Let's get in number nine. Let's do it. This one's kind of interesting, Mike. This one's interesting because we got uh, deck builders. Yeah. We got bag builders. Yeah. I wish we had a tile builder. I know. I wish we had a tile builder. I wish, I wish that was a builder. thing that was more common. <laughs> I wish we had Carcassonne, but with tile building and speed elements. Is there any game that fits all those things? I think Sorcerer City does. Sorcerer right? City fits mm. super fast Carcassonne. Uh, so this is sort of a, a deck builder, except for you have a bunch of square tiles, kind of a la Carcassonne, and you're going to be playing over, I think, five rounds where you are, you're going to be under a time limit, yep. and you basically have to flip over your deck or your stack of tiles uh, to build out a city. And in such a way to um, optimize different scoring opportunities. There's uh, basically yellow uh, tiles and uh, colors on these tiles to give you money. There's red, which will control your influence. Yep. There's green that will get you uh, prestige points, which are your victory points. Yep. And then there's purple, which gives you magic, which will ultimately get converted into one turn. of the other three. Uh, so it's really cool because you're doing sort of a deck building thing, but with tiles. Yeah. And then shuffling up these tiles and hoping that these things come out in such a way that you can build something that makes sense. It's not limited like Carcassonne where stuff has to make sense in terms of matching colors. No, yeah, or you types, can put stuff wherever. But you really want to build groups of a lot of yellow so I can buy more tiles mm -hmm. or uh, red so I get influence and get these perks. And so it's just really cool. It's a cool, like, I didn't, you know, I've never seen that before. Yeah. I've seen kind of a deck builder with these tile stacks. Yeah, because ultimately what it is, you're buying new tiles, putting them in a stack, and then Hoping you're drawing the right order. Stack. Yeah. What's interesting about this is you, you, for the most part, depending on if you run out of time or not, you always go through your entire deck, which yes. is interesting. Um, but yeah, and it's like we, we were thinking about it, and then we were like, I guess it is like totally like a deck builder. It's like a deck building Carcassonne, which is how uh, James Hudson from Skybound tends to describe it. It's, like, it's kind of like deck building Carcassonne. And it's really, which is a great really fun. Way to make a game. <laughs> yeah, and there's like monsters in there, and you can buy all these like cool, better tiles. But again, it's like you have a two minute time period to build your whole city. The first year, or the first round, rather, first round and the f second round are pretty easy. Like in two minutes, you can kind of go cash. You're like, okay, I'm going to turn this one this way. Pleasure here. But by the end of it, you generally are getting like anywhere between one to three new tiles each round. So by the fifth year, you oh, have sack. significantly more tiles and yeah. getting through all of them in two minutes because the more you have out, the better is really difficult yeah. and it gets very stressful and the game just ramps up so much. And then as you said, there's monsters and things. So they mess up your life yeah. because they it will destroy make tiles. Or they cover up a you, tile. Or... Yeah, cover up stuff. So now you have to adapt and improvise and you're trying to go as fast as you can anyway. And once you put down a tile, it's there. Yeah. So, you, you know, you have to... You have to think quick, but you have to be decisive and you have to be strategic at the same time. And so it's like a really cool... Yeah, it's really fun. fun. Again, uh, a lot of these deck builders, you know, of a sort that we chose, we like because they do something different with yeah. the idea, the kind of concept of like building up this hand or stack of your stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Sorcery yeah. is great. It's super cool. It's like Carcassonne is stressful. And that's yeah. great. Uh, that's something that I yeah, see. Like, I want to be City. Stone, but I want, I want to be stressed out. I'm like, yeah. all right, I'll play Sorcerer City. It's fun, and the cool thing is if you're playing, um, uh, you know, multiple players, you're doing all that building simultaneously. So it doesn't, like, bog down on time too much no, depending no. on the player yeah. count. It goes pretty quick because it's real time uh, for those those building rounds. Uh, and it's it's just uh, super fun. Like, I don't know, I really yeah, enjoy it. It's a great game. Like, I, I, you know, trying to see if you can keep up with the game as it goes. Yeah. Because it gets very hard. Yeah, it does. It does. But really, it's great. Number nine is, our source, is Sorcerer City. Uh, really, really great game. Newer game. Um, really fun. 
yeah, it's just, it just works. It just works. It's really, really great. Great tile builder, deck builder, whatever, a builder, you know? And so really, really great game. That's our number nine. Let's go ahead and get our number eight. Two. I always feel like with every kind of mechanic, you're always like, what's the best gateway game? Gateway. How do I get into this? Yeah, mechanic? like what's the best gateway version of this mechanic? And for us, that is for deck building is Quest for El Dorado, which is yeah. our number eight. Quest for El Dorado is a, a Reiner Knizia game. And it's a okay. racing game, actually. You mm -hmm. you set up these big, giant, like, hexagonal tiles, and you set them up in a different way. There's a bunch of different ways you can set them up, or you can just kind of set them up randomly, which is a little wild, because it can be, it can be you can really have a really bad setup, but nonetheless, tough. you can do it. And yeah. there's a whole bunch of ways you can set up, and essentially, you start at this end, and depending on where you need to go, you have to get to the other end, and, and the basically, whoever the first one there wins the game. And so it's just a racing game, but... It is done through deck building. On those tiles, there are essentially three different kinds of terrain. There's like jungle, yeah. there's markets, yep. or I guess like cities, and then there's water. And there's also gray. There's also gray. Just just, Which just is the color gray. The gray, color gray. Because Kinesia coming Kinesia through. Kinesia in theme. He's like, no, gray. I need yeah. more gray in this game. No, I need more gray. Swamp. No, it's gray. It's gray. You just have to discard cards. Point is, as Nick said, there's a few different terrains. A few different cards. terrains. And then you have different cards, and those cards, for the most part, allow you to go through a terrain. Yep. So on the terrain tiles, say it's jungle, there'll be a jungle that's like, oh, it takes one to get through the jungle, one machete, because that's how you get through the jungle. And then there's other spots that are denser, and it takes two machetes to get through that jungle, and those spots that are really dense, and those take three machetes. So you have different cards in your hand, and you're playing them out, and the cards will have like, one machete or two machetes. And essentially, if you play a two machete, you can either move through two one machetes or move through one two machete. Yeah. And essentially, that's how, you, and that's how you do it. You're playing out your cards and you're essentially trying to work your way through this. And it's nice because it's like, if you want to go through a straight path, that's better because it's a lot shorter. But going through, you're going through the heart of the jungle or you're going through yeah. the heart of the market or you can where people skirt. are trying to get you to buy like yeah. Starbucks, you're slanging Starbucks, you yeah. know, and stuff like that. You're going through the heart of the ocean or something like that. So it's like, it's gonna, you need way better cards, but it's a more straight shot. Yeah. And the thing is, it's the deck building is very simple. You're yeah. just playing these cards, moving through, and then the... Cards that allow you to move through the market also have money on them, and that allows you to buy new cards. And the new cards, usually for the most part, are just like better versions of the cards that you already have. Yeah. And then there's some extra stuff that kind of goes along. Because, like it. you said, it's it, there's certain things that require like two machetes, but it's not enough to play two cards with one machete. You need a card that has two or more machetes yeah. printed on the one card. Yeah. So you have to buy better yeah, versions unless you of want to kind of go around to everything. be able to like yeah. boogie through through whatever or like you said you can go around the size but you can move a lot further yeah and basically you know cut down on that time yeah. so it forces you to, to upgrade your cards but the cards are like fairly simple yes none of them are too complicated and the one thing I actually really enjoy is there's a lot of cards you can buy that are one-time use yeah uh, and but they're powerful they'll do a really cool thing but then you ditch it and that's just the one time you can use it, uh, and so it, it kind of the game doesn't get too complicated. There's a no. lot of deck builders out there that are really wonderful for the diversity of cards. Yes, types. of course. But it it's also, one of its strong suits, it in my opinion. Does yeah, but it does also make it harder because Hard to there's get more into. stuff to explain. There's more things to talk about. This one, it, there's not a whole lot of different yeah. stuff, and there's only like three of each card. So there's this kind of roving market where once a, you only have a certain amount of cards available, yeah, certain like types. Six, yeah. Once one of those empties, you can bring a new card down into the market that's now available. You buy, buy the first one, and then there'll be two more of that card yeah. that are available by so you or nice, someone else. So it's nice because if you're the one who empties it, you get to then choose the new you get to choose what new cards coming down to the market mm -hmm. so you can kind of game it that way where you're like no i want this card and i want to make sure this person doesn't get the these kinds of cards so i'm gonna bring down this one mm -hmm. and you can like block each other because ultimately it's a racing game so if i'm in a spot mike can't go into that go spot around. so then he has to go around and it's just really really fun really tense racing game where you it's, it's one of the things that always i feel like it always ends up being close yeah. Which is weird because a lot of times, like, there'll be someone who, like, you think you're down just and out. screams ahead in and the beginning. <laughs> and then they get to a spot where they're like, I need four oars, which is how you get through water. And you're like, 
and they're just like, I just have to sit haven't, here. They haven't bought those cars. They weren't thinking ahead. And so then they're just stuck there. Unless they want to have to like go back around. And so it's like, it always ends up being close and it's a really, really great game. It's always different because you don't know what cards are going to come up and yeah. the, the map can be completely different each time. It's really, really good and a great kind of intro into deck building because ultimately it's pretty darn simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's great. That's you why need it's a way our... to get into these yeah. mechanics. It's a great, great number eight. It's wonderful. Great eight. Great why? eight. Why not? It's a great eight. Let's it's get into it. a great seven eight. Straight on from get eight. heaven. <laughs> no, seven. Get it. I think people might be surprised by this next one, Mikey. Yeah. Yeah. Why? This is because, like, once upon a time, it was so highly regarded, and now they're like, well, everyone around it's, here is just saying, like, well, obviously, number one's going to be legendary. It could never be seven. Seven cannot be legendary. It's their most played game of all time. It is our most played game of all time. It can't be number seven. It's, it's, I think it's number seven because it's our most played game of all time. It is. Number seven is officially legendary. Blowing your mind. Marvel legendary. Probably. Deck building, whatever it's, it's called. It's great. Um, uh, but yeah, so this is a, a deck builder where you get to play all of your favorite Marvel superheroes yeah. and smash up all your favorite Marvel villains. Yeah. It is awesome because yeah. you can play as Wolverine with Captain America and with, Wolverine with uh, Wolver a different version of Wolverine and a different version and of Captain America. And then Moon Knight. Because, <laughs> yeah. Because it's a character. Uh, it's a deck builder where you get to play as these different heroes. Yeah. And, and we, as a cooperative game, as a team, can recruit um, a mix of different heroes, try to specialize in one hero or whatever. And it's mm -hmm. very combo-tastic. Yes. You want to get the right icons on those characters to then trigger icons that you play later in your little tableau on your turn that you build in front of you to smash up uh, henchmen and thugs and then ultimately Loki or whoever your mastermind yeah. is. Yeah, so you have a mastermind who's like the main big boss and you win the game if you if you defeat them four times. That's how you win the game. Yeah, yeah, and throughout the game, you're constantly bringing new villains into the city. You have to constantly essentially manage the city while trying to beef up enough to hit the mastermind because the mastermind mm -hmm. has to be much stronger. And deal with their scheme. Yeah, and then they have a scheme, a plot they're trying to do and the scheme always changes stuff. It usually adds basically always adds another way to lose. Yes. So it's like, oh, if like 10 villains escape the city, you lose. If this da, 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 happens, you lose. And it tend, tends to make things harder. And it's just, talk about, like, this is a game with like variability because there's, I, I, I recently played this um, with my roommate and I was like, I wonder how many expansions were behind. We're like 13 expansions behind at this point. That's so many. And we have. Like, as much content as we have, there's that much content maybe oh, more. Oh, more at this point, that's yeah. That's new. Which is wild, and we have a lot of content for this game. Like we have, I think, over like a hundred heroes that we can choose from. You only play with five, <laughs> so it's like you just the variability is. We have like fifty different masterminds. It's wild, and again, we haven't. We don't even have half of it anymore. But it's really good. This is kind of more of a standard deck builder in terms of like yeah. you got your basic deck, you're building up with new bigger cards, and you're trying to make combos. And that's it. Up with a huge stack of cool stuff. Yeah, but the fun is like the co-op nature of like trying to work together to like beat all these things, trying to beef up enough while trying to cull your deck from the crappy cards to get the better cards. And then just, it's just the variability. Being like, oh, like we have, a, I have a randomizer on my phone that like takes whatever expansions and stuff you have and then just randomly gives you five heroes, a scheme, a mastermind, villains, all that kind of stuff. And then you just play with that and it's really fun to be like, okay, let's see how this group works out, you know? And it's like- yeah, this squad does. Yeah, and it's really fun. We've played this game a lot. So much. I mean, there was, and we've talked about it a lot, like there was a stretch. About a year? For about a year where we would play two, three, four nights a week, and we'd play two, three, four games in yeah. each night. I mean, we played a lot. It was, it was it the was game bad. that we played. We got all in. At that time, we were buying every expansion. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, 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 we, and yeah, you're right. Like, it's kind of dropped down simply because, like, I'm so, still super down to play it, but, like, we've played it enough for a lifetime. If yeah. we never played this game again, it would be okay. Yeah, I want to play it again. Not but because it's, like, it's bad. Yeah. It's because, like, dude, we played so much. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's really, really fun. Yeah. Um, and we've been talking about it. You've actually played it recently. So I'm kind of, like, getting that itch again. I'm like, yeah. ooh, we got to play it. Me too. Like, I, I've it's been, a I've been, great Because, it, yeah, it's it's really, really great. But also, like, this is one of the first deck builders we ever played, if not the yeah. first. So it's, like. I think I played, like, Dominion a couple times. Yeah, but it's, like, it's Not just, on the list. Not on the list. Dominion, sorry. Sorry, Dominion. Um, sorry that you're a terrible game. You're boring. You're not a terrible. You're just boring. <laughs> Incredibly boring. That's my thing. I'm like, play something like Legendary. It's the same kind of concept, and you know, except for Wolverine and claws. <laughs> exactly. But nonetheless, Legendary give is me Dominion really with violence. <laughs> with yeah, more violence. Really what I want. 
Yeah, it's great. I mean, really, and it's like you can get like the base game with like maybe one of the big box expansions, yeah. and like you're set. You don't even need anything else. So but much. then if you want to buy more, you can buy more. Um, you get in deep. It's really good. It's so fun. It's dropped down our list because we just don't play it as much anymore. We yeah. have more deck builders that we end up liking more. But man, oh man, do we love uh, Legendary. It's Shout great. out to Upper Deck, man. Shout yeah. out to Legendary for creating something that we have milked yeah. so much enjoyment out of. Yeah, really. I mean, it's really good. Yeah. It's great. <sighs> it's All right. Fantastic. Legendary. Our number seven. Let's go and get our number six. Cheers. So our number six is actually another game, kind of like Xeno Shift. When you buy a card, you immediately get it. You immediately get it's such a good access to it. It's such a good twist. This one, uh, unlike Xeno Shift, has big bugs. In this one, you're dealing with fancy people going to a party, you're and you're trying to dress them and make the decorations in Rococo. Rococo, which is now about to come out with a deluxe version, but we have the old version, and that's fine. Uh, yeah. I like the game a lot. It's totally fun. Uh, we love this game. This is a game where you are. Um, you are uh, yeah, garment makers, yeah, essentially. Yeah. You're making dresses and you're making cool coats and stuff like that for the ladies and the gentlemen who are going to the King's Ball. And it basically what you want is you want more of your garments in the ball. That way be, yeah. that way, people see your stuff more often. They go, oh, that's a Murphy. That's a Mike Murphy. Not one of those crap Nick Murphys. That's that's one of the, the, the older brothers. You know? The other one works in a bunch of straps. The other one works in a hovel. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, you're trying to, I think it's like you're you're trying to appease the queen, or at least you can visit the queen in the game. I don't know who's throwing the party, if it's the, the queen. I think it's the king, because the it? king's in his little hall in the very top of the board. Oh, yeah, you're right. But yeah. you can visit the queen, because the queen's got the real power. Yeah, she got that power. But yeah, so you are trying to use your workers um, three in a round, unless you purchase a, an employee that turn, which will give you a fourth action. Uh, and you're putting them to gain um, fabrics and thread and stuff like that uh, to make these garments. You can um, you can spend your money to uh, build statues and put musicians into buildings, and there's, it's sort of an area like, oh, influence. Oh, my, uh, Mike Murphy, he put this violinist in this hall. That's very nice of him. It's, you're just trying to gain prestige. a bunch of Metallica covers in there. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Apocalyptica. He's hired Apocalyptica to come in here. Uh, yeah, and so you're just basically adding. <laughs> You're trying to touch as much of the party as you can yeah. with your uh, your tastes and your styles. Uh, and it's just really cool because you get to get these employees that you then use, and you only use a few of them, so you'll shuffle a few times throughout the game. It's not a huge deck builder no, in terms no. of, like, you're not going to get 50 cards, no. but getting those cards is essential, and those cards is how you, are how you do your actions. And there's basically apprentice actions uh, that are weaker. They can go to certain spots and it's get like errand boys. Then errand you know? boy. Yeah. Then you have journeymen who are kind of like been there, and they can make some. They can make some garments and stuff. And then you yeah. have your masters who have been at this for a long time. They can make the best garments, and they can also visit the queen. They can hire new employees. They can hire new employees. Yeah. They run the show. And the cool thing is, is as you start to get these employees, they start to come with little abilities on top of you using them to do whatever action on the board. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, you can do this, and you can get like an extra bolt of fabric yeah. as well, or you can do this thing over here so you kind of get these like little combos building and you're trying to get better versions of your employees and the right types of employees to do the right types of jobs yeah which is super cool it's really so it's, good it's one that i think like we didn't think about the fact that's a deck builder yeah. for a long time we're like oh that's exactly like it's what literally you're, what you're doing yeah. you're literally doing it and the cards are how you drive your actions i mean yeah. so it really is it's a just fantastic different deck it's builder. a really great game it's gotten kind of gotten a resurgence recently because a lot of people were like hey this game is great you know and it's kind of been fancy stuff is dope yeah people it, it's just one of like hey this is a really underrated game and now it's getting a deluxe version which is super cool um and stuff and so yeah rococo is really really great uh it, give it a shot it's a really great little deck builder um and it's it's just overall an outstanding game and that's why it's our number six chill that's, going, the, that's the that's the, the bottom half of the list it's the fanciest that's the fanciest part of the bottom half is rococo that's but true. it's just still the bottom half that's still the bottom half let's go to the top half number five yeah Number five. First bag builder. It's the first bag builder on the list. Yeah. So this is the thing where you're trying to get the right stuff at the right time and hire followers in Orly Home. Orleans. Orleans. Orleans, man. Uh, Orleans is a game where you're uh, trying to basically like better your your lot in life in in the in France. You're trying to kind of build up a little empire for yourself. Yeah. Get some followers. You're trying to uh, build up kind of a. Guild halls around, get some goods, trade in some things, get smart, get up the scholarly track, and and kind of contribute to the greater good of the community by uh, donating stuff to the town hall people, yeah. which is a 
I guess slavery. I don't know how it I know, works in it France. I know, it's kind of weird in that way. Uh, but the point is, you can do all these different things <laughs> to, uh, yeah, I'm like, you always send people. I'm like, what? Are, I guess maybe you're like, you. Maybe you're sending them to work there, you know. Let's hope but so. Let's hope they're getting paid. Um, yeah, it's just the South of France. It's probably, everyone's getting paid back there. Uh, anyway, so in this game, you are recruiting these workers, these little discs and stuff. And I do uh, think you should get the geek up bits from Board Game Geek because they're nice do. and chunky. It's nice. And they go into a bag. And then you're drawing out only a certain amount depending on your level up the night track. You can basically move all these tracks to get kind of better stuff. Um, and you're pulling out only a certain amount of those uh, tokens each round. And then you can use what tokens you pulled to go to different action spaces yeah. to ultimately carry out your actions. So this is a really cool one where you're really trying to get better people, but there's always the risk because you're pulling out stuff from a bag and then you putting it back you in, yeah. you don't know if you're going to get the stuff you really need. You never know. So how do you adapt to that situation? Do you get more monks, which are wild? Do you get multiple scholars so you have a better chance of pulling out a scholar or whatever? This one really kind of leans into a little bit of like the press your luck of it all because you don't quite know what you're going to pull uh, from round to round. Yeah. But you're trying to basically do the best with what you got yeah. to kind of go up all these different avenues for scoring. Yeah, exactly. Sure. It's it is it's really really great, and there's like a ton of content for it. There's like a expansion called Trade and Intrigue, which essentially adds like two different different ways to play the game. Mm -hmm. Although the, the base of the game is still the same, but like different stuff you can do. Mm -hmm. There's like one where you're like moving around the board, trying to like essentially pick up and deliver stuff. Yeah. Then there's um like a fifth the obligatory fifth player expansion, but then there's Orleans Invasion, which if you ever heard us talk about, that's our favorite version because one, it gives you a ton of different ways to play. There's like a, yeah. a, a specific way that's like, hey, this is great to play if you're playing with two players. It's called like the duel. Then there's like three different solo scenarios that are all super different and super tough and really fun. But the best part, in our opinion, is that there is a co-op Full co-op. Full co-op where essentially, and that's, it's the invasion one. And it basically what it is, is there's, uh, Orleans is about to get invaded by, you know, outside forces, the, the English, let's say. <laughs> Um, damn those English. <laughs> damn you, English. And so you essentially have to like make the city ready for the invasion. So you're having to like store food. You're having to like build up the wall. And essentially it's the same kind of thing except for like all the stuff you're doing is now different because now yeah. points and stuff don't matter because there's no like winner. You, you all win together. You the game or you don't. Yeah, so you all have there's like these objectives that you always have to do. You have to like build up the wall, get a certain amount of money, store food, get citizen tiles. Yeah, you get, get the citizens inside the walls for safety. That but then sense. each person has a role, and they each have their own individual objective. They also have to meet. And so if hard. any objectives, whether it's an individual one or the group ones, if any of them don't get met, you lose. And it's really hard. Yeah. And it's super super fun. And to us, to the point now where I'm just kind of like. Like, I'm down to play competitive or the owner, especially sure. if we're playing, like, trade, you know, with the yeah. trade and intrigue, trade, the trade God, half of play that. Trade. Yeah, play, trade half is really fun. But it's just like, I'm like, I'd just rather play co-op because then you're like, you get to talk through stuff, you get to work together, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go do this, you can do this. And it just makes the game so much better. But Orleans as a whole is just outstanding. It's fantastic, and it's just a fun, um, I just like the all the different ways and directions you can go. Yeah. And the fact that you're going to have to adapt to what you've got this round. Uh, and time moves quick in the game, you know, and so do I like leave certain of my tokens on action spaces that aren't full yet so that I hope on my next turn I can get that last piece to do this yeah. action or do I pull them all back, save them for later, toss them, whatever. Uh, it's just, um, it's a fun puzzle. And so the, the co-op's nice because we can talk through the puzzle and yeah. really think through the strategy because yeah. there's a lot of strategy to be uh, utilized to in the doom, game, to be which doom. is very cool. So Orleone is our number five. So good. It's fantastic. We love it, love it, love it. You've heard us talk about it and Invasion a lot. Yeah. And it's going to happen because it's great. It's a great bag builder, deck builder, bag builder um, in our collection. Yeah. That's why it's yeah. there. All right. So let's go and get to number four. Sure. I guess this is like the bag builder section of our list, you know? It's like, uh, we got them all together. another bag builder right here, and that is the Quacks of Quidlinburg. Quidlinburg. Wolfgang Warsh Jam. The Quacks of Quidlinburg mm. hit the scene, and man, did it blow mm. up, and God, did, did, did it deserve it. Still one of my best gaming experiences ever. The first one? First, first time, time I played? played it. Talk about it, Mike. It was at Dice Tower Con. I've talked about it many times. It was, it was actually the night before Dice Tower Con began. That's true. It was like sort of the pre-party where... The convention area was sort of open, the side rooms anyway, so we were like in a side room. 
uh, and we like had literally just met our our podcast mates for the first time in person that yeah, day. That's true. And uh, Dave Luza brought his copy, his German copy, yeah, and taught it wasn't us out the, the US game. yet. Yeah, and we got to play it, and I, I played it twice that night, and I was like, "This is the most fun ever." It's so <laughs> stinking fun. Yeah, it's a great. It's, it's such great a good press game. Your luck it game. really it's the press your luck game. So essentially, you have a bag, and your bag has a bunch of different ingredients in it. So there's like there's like mushrooms, and there's like spiders, spiders and all and this different stuff. Birds. And skulls. essentially, you're making a big potion. You're a crazy doctor, a quack. There's no ducks in the game. It's very disappointing. I agree, but nonetheless, you're a quack. You're a crazy doctor, and you're essentially making this potion. So what happens is you're pulling these chits out of a bag, and the chits will be again the the color of the chit which could be like green is spiders orange is pumpkins red is mushrooms all this kind of stuff and they have a value usually between somewhere between one and four yeah and then you place it in your pot and the pot is a big swirl so the first one you place in the first spot and then if the next one you grab is a one it goes directly next to it if it's a two it goes one two away so you want to pull the bigger ones because you're trying to essentially get as far out in your pot as possible yeah and you have these white little snowberries as mikey calls them and like or snap peas. You want to call them snap, snap pe peas? Snap peas. Snap peas. They Whatever. Snap, they explode. I don't yeah, know. the snap peas. I don't know what the hell they're called. You get these little snap peas, and the snap peas are bad, and they have different values, one through three. And if you ever have um, more than seven, so if you ever have eight in total value of Some, your snap peas, uh, yeah, yeah, then your cauldron explodes, and you have to stop. So you're constantly trying to pull stuff out, but not pull those white ones. It's really bad to pull the white ones. But then on top of that, all the other chips, which is like six or seven different colors. They all do different stuff. So yeah. it might be like, whenever you pull this one, the yellow one, the next one you pull, regardless of color of that, it's doubled. So instead of being a two, it's now a four. And so you are making these crazy combos between all the stuff, and you're trying to essentially load your bag to give yourself the best chance possible. Yeah. But without a doubt, late in the game, you're just gonna pull the all worst. white ones and your thing's gonna explode in four turns. And you're like, yeah. no! And it's just like, it's it's beautiful. So it's beautiful for that fun. reason because it's a press your luck game and you can it, like mathematically it doesn't make sense but it's either going really well when it shouldn't or yeah. it's going really poorly when it shouldn't. Yeah. You know, and it's just so fun because you're just you're trying to give yourself good odds yeah. and the combos you can yeah, build and all that variability with the different powers that each type of chit can have. Yeah. It's yeah, just like it's each, so fun. Each color chit has four different abilities that yeah. you can choose from. So it's like the variability because you can just randomize which ones. And what works well with others. And it's like, man, different. the variability is through the roof. And now there's an expansion, which gives you two more abilities for each color, a couple more different kinds of chips. So good. These witches that give you cool stuff. I mean, it's just, it is, uh, it's it's climbing for me even more and more and more. It's, every time I play it, I'm like, this is so good. It just goes over well with everybody. It's simple enough where you probably can bring like a newer person in there, if especially if they've played like at least one or two modern games. It's just so good, man. It's so good. It's just fantastic. It's just really fun. I mean, it's definitely the funnest game on our list. Uh, that's what's whole thing is to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, like, I don't try to you mean. It's just a funny like, way of putting it. Yeah, it, it, that's what's built to do. Yeah, yeah. It's not the deepest game, but it is the most silly and fun. Yeah, for exactly. Sure. It exactly. gives like big moments happen because constantly because someone's on a ride and they're like, I can't believe this happening. I can't believe, it. and they're like, Holy crap! And like, meanwhile, like I crapped out. So much yeah. earlier, and it was sick. But it's nice also because yeah. your your pot exploding is not like the end of the world. No, it's not you know, idea, so it, it, like, it never fine. feels that horrible when it happens. Yeah. But Quacks is great. I'm sure you all have heard about it. If you haven't tried it, God, yeah, try man, it. I it's know. so much fun. It's just great. It's our number four. It's wonderful. <sighs> Let's just move on to number three. Let's do it. So number three is a game, that another one that I didn't think of as being a deck builder uh, at the start, it but totally it absolutely is. is because you're hoping to get a diverse hand of cards at the exact right time in Great Western Trail. Oh, in Great Western Trail, you are running cattle to yeah. Kansas City. That's all you're doing. You're just running them, going from town to town and stuff like that on your Selling way. Selling them off, yeah. Selling them off in Kansas City and hoping to gain Western glory, I guess. Uh, yeah. So in this game, um, the deck building element comes through uh, your 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 hand of cards that you'll be using uh, throughout your run. And then certainly when you get to Kansas City, you're going to be selling cows. And the way it works is you want to have as many different types of cow as you can. Yeah. Because when you go to Kansas City to sell, you can only sell one of each type. Yeah, they want so diversity. So if I have four yeah. um, like Dutch belts, for example, I'm only selling one of those cows. People that's want, coming home with me. Like I don't want all them them same cows. Give me different color cows. Yeah. All right. So you're trying to like as you go through and in, into these different buildings, you can use cards to get 
uh, up these different tracks to gain uh, money, to get new employees, all sorts of stuff. So there's often um, opportunities to to use cards or discard cards to gain new cards, all in hopes of building out the right hand. Yeah. Uh, and then another thing you can do in the game is you can buy cattle, additional cattle, better versions, mm -hmm. uh, more valuable cattle that'll sell for higher prices throughout the game. That's where the deck building element comes yeah. in. And the rest is sort of a deck slash hand management game. Yeah, yeah but it's such a good game. It's really, really great. This is a game that like both of us, I feel like, was just like when it came out, it like really made a huge splash. Everyone loved it, loved it, loved it. Yeah. And we were both kind of like, all right. Like it just, just we we hadn't play played it, it hadn't time. played it, just didn't look appealing at all. And then I played it. Given the cover, I can't imagine why. It was yeah, no. a minute. You know, um, I played it with a, a couple of friends of mine yeah. at a, at a fully expecting to not enjoy it. Yeah, fully expecting, and we and like none of us really knew the game, so we were like fumbling through it, and just and then by the end of it, I was just like, oh, even like we played again, we played a bunch of stuff wrong. It was just like we, yeah. it was a real rough play of it because like we just like we're kind of learning as we go. It's a tough one to be all new. At. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so we were just, and then by the end of it, I was just like. Oh, I think I liked that. And then uh, we ended up getting it. And then I told Mike, I was like, I think we're gonna really like this. And then we played it and we were just like, ball, oh, absolutely loved it. And so yeah, it's 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 become one of my favorite games. I really love the deck building. Again, it's like one of those things like that's an integral part of the game, but it kind of feels secondary, even though it really isn't. Because yeah. it's not what you're doing the majority of the time. The majority of the time you're like moving through the city and you're not like plowing through your hand like you are in Legendary, where each time you get deck Use cards and then it goes away. Right. Deck yeah. cards go away. This one is just like you're, you're again, like you're it's deck building slash hand management. You're trying to make your hand as good as possible. At the right time. Yes, and it's just like, it's super fun. It's it's one of the most popular games in the last like five, 10 years, and it's deserved. I, I think it's a really, really great game. Big, uh, it's just wonderful. It's yep. just great. It's fantastic. Uh, we've talked about it a lot, um, and like that hand management is really cool. Where you're not blowing all your cards at once; you're just using one or two, yeah. and it's very kind of tactical in that way. Yeah. It's really cool to hopefully get to Kansas City with the right stuff, sell it all off, make a ton of money, get fame and glory. Tons nice of fame, big, like a really wide brim cap, really yes. wide. That's Doing the ultimate goal Doing in the Western Trail. Yeah, is a super hat. Um, super hat. But that's why it's our number three, folks. Is uh, it's just a fantastic game. I yes, guess indeed. That's why it's hype on the list. Duh. Number three. Great Western Trail, let's get to number two. All righty, this is, um, again, like we kind of talked about, like we like deck builders that tend to do a little bit, something a little bit different. I feel like this yeah. is something that does that, where the, you're constantly building your deck, but then this one, it was like, it's a deck builder with a board. And I feel like there's lots of deck builders with boards, but nonetheless, this is a game uh, where you are diving down into a dungeon in Clank, a deck building adventure. So good. Cold Once upon there. a time, I might have said this was the best game of all time. Mike really loved this it's game. Really gotta love it. It's so great. It's still one of our favorite games. It's just incredible. Like, so basically, what it is is there is a big board in the middle, and uh, it has a dungeon. You start yep. off in the top, and then as you go deeper and deeper and deeper, yeah, down to the dungeon, a castle or a ship, depending on what expansion you're playing with, um, or a pyramid. Um, you're essentially going down there to try to get treasure. Yeah. The problem is there's a dragon down there. The dragon does not want you to steal her treasure. Would so prefer you didn't. You're essentially trying to sneak around. You try to sneak around, but then you are playing cards. So each hand, you're getting a certain amount of cards, and you're playing those cards. The cards will have a couple different things. They will have buying power to buy new cards. They go yep. to your discard pile, typical deck builder stuff. Yep. Or they have boots. Boots allow you to move from space to space on the board. <laughs> and then they also have swords, because you'll be coming across monsters. There's a whole row in the row of cards that you can buy. There's sometimes monsters, and yep. you can fight those monsters. And you find those monsters, they usually give you stuff, give you money, give you, like, they give you a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, Perks. But then some of your cards will also give you what's called Clank. <laughs> and so, um, and so what Clank is, is Clank is essentially you making noise. You're like, do you need, do you need, do you need, like that, you know? A strategically placed rake. <laughs> Just you step, it goes, <laughs> exactly like that. Dragon said, well, there's clearly a Looney Tunes. Well, there's someone. Here. <laughs> Bugs Bunny's down here somewhere. <laughs> to I can get him out. Rabbit. <laughs> and so essentially, you're, you're, that's you making noise. And then at certain times, there, when cards come out in the in the dungeon row, which is the buying row, you will then take all the cubes, all the clank cubes that people are putting in. You put them in a bag, and then you have to draw them out. And that's the that's the dragon attacking. And if you draw out one of your cubes you then get hit by the dragon. There's a certain amount you can get to, I think it's 10. And once you get 10 of your cubes out, you've been hit 10 times, you die. And yep. 
depending on where on the board you are, you die matters. Because if you're if you're on the top half of the board, you die. You still get to count all your points because you died not you got in the, the dungeon. loot up into the air, man. You died of your injuries, but you didn't get eaten by the dragon. Yeah. But if you die in the bottom half of the, of the no board, no one gets to know how brave you were. No, because that dragon straight ate you yeah. and pooped you out. Straight up. Yeah. Just straight up puts you right through. Exactly. Right. Bam, in, out. Exactly. And so, uh. and so it's just this push your luck where you're getting these cards. And on top of that, then the cards do a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. There's a, the cards, the, the things they can give you and they do for you are, are very... Very, very. Uh, they give you... Stuff, there's there's uh, influence and stuff you can use to buy cards, but there's also actual money which you can use to buy artifacts and and, yeah. and backpacks and stuff to get more treasures and things. So you're kind of just trying to like run around and, and do as much as you can and then hopefully escape all the way win. off the board again to get a bonus of 20 points. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just fun. Like, it's I love so fun. The diversity of cards. I love the style, the art, the jokes that are written kind of on the cards. Even Clank in Space is really cool and really has a lot of fun fan yeah. service stuff. So it's just a fun game, you know, and it's just cool to like, maybe play fast and loose with a clank because there's certain cards that, well, you'll have to add clank, but you can do really cool stuff. But yeah. It comes at a price or you're risking, but there's other cards that maybe let you take some clank off the board if it hasn't gone in the bag yeah. already. So maybe you can like hopefully pair those two things together. Yeah, it's really good. And there's there's like four expansions for clank at this at point. Least, and there's clank four. legacy. There's all. Yeah, so it's I nice because legacy so bad. all the, the four expansions give you another board and the boards are all double sided. There's like a harder side and an easier side. Yeah. So now at this point we have we don't have clank in space. Clank in space is also great, but we we just preferred normal clank. Um but at this point we have eight boards we could choose from because we have yeah. four double sided boards. So like the and then on top of that a lot of the expansions also give you new cards. So yeah. we have like just mass amount of cards, tons of different boards, and we're like, man, we can just play this game forever at this point. It is yeah. just so darn good. We have played quite a bit, yeah. um, enough to make it our number two deck yeah, builder. It's really you know, good. It's, it's just, uh, it's given us a lot of joy, and it was formerly my number one game of all time, so yeah. of course it's gonna be highly Still ranked. great though, still great. Super great, but we do have one deck builder that rises above the rest, Nick. I think we should get into it right now. Nick, what, Mike? Not only is baseball the greatest sport of all time, mm. it is the only sport that matters. Baseball, baby. I've been missing baseball. Me lately. too. I've been missing. I've been watching lots of baseball compilations on YouTube. It's so I've been sad. Baseball, There's no hardcore. baseball right now, but there is a way to play yourself, and that is baseball highlights. Twenty. You know what makes baseball better, Mike? Robots. Robots. Cyborgs. <laughs> People throwing like 130 miles an hour. Super cool. Uh, so God, this, this game is, is good. Dude. It's so good. Tactical, <laughs> perfect deck builder <laughs> that is a one-on-one -on -one tug of war. Outthink your opponent through baseball. Through baseball. So in this game, you will be playing a hand of six cards per game. Yep. Uh, and you are trying to score more runs. You're playing a game of baseball. So if I'm playing a card, I'm going to be playing a card that's going to threaten a certain amount of hits, a certain amount of doubles or base runners, singles, whatever it is, is going to put a certain amount of people on base, or if I have people on base, maybe allow a certain amount of people to score. Nick is then going to play a card, hopefully to react to the offense I am threatening, and then on that card, it might be threatening offense of his own. Mm -hmm. So there's these great cards. This is part of why this is such a good game is the cards are often multi-use. They're almost always two-use, yeah. So they will do some sort of defensive thing or something for you while providing an offensive yeah. Which then I would then have to defend against your offense yes. and then threaten my own offense, so you're and you're constantly doing that double. Yeah. So it's really amazing because this game comes down to acceptable losses. Yeah, it's a it lot of sacrifice. I can, it's like, you know what? You're going to hit this thing. I'm going to let you have this double, which is going to score you two runs because I'm going to play a card that I'm going to, I'm going to hit like three home runs. Yeah. So let me see how you deal with that. Yeah. You know? And so you're playing this game and trying to figure out each other and think of like what they have in their hand. And there's times where you know a couple things about what they have in their hand. So this is a deck builder where you have a deck of 15 cards. Yes. And the cool thing about it is throughout the game. I was gonna say, what's the biggest problem with deck builders, Mike? There is a flaw to deck builders and it's called deck bloat. You start off with only this many cards, by the end of the game you have this many cards. And that's really cool, except for 
if you want to get these three three cards together, you're choosing between and you'll inevitably have a hand like at the end of the game that's all your basic cards. Yes, yeah, and you're like, wow, I'm not doing anything yeah. with this hand. So deck bloat is a bummer, and a lot yeah. of good um, deck builders you realize is about how do you call how do you some deal of your with that? Cards. Yeah, how do you deal with that? So with baseball highlights, the game does it for you. You never have more than 15 cards because oh, every time so at the end of a game, you'll have a certain amount of money to spend yes. to get new uh, free players. agents. You got new some free, free agents, agents out free there. Agents. And the cool thing is, if you get someone on your roster, like in real baseball, there's a fixed number on the roster. 15. You only have 15 people. Boom. So if you gain a free agent, you got to send someone down to the minors. Yep. You got to send them down. Uh, and so you never end up with more than 15 cards. Always have 15. Always have 15 cards, and any new free agent you get will go on top of your deck, meaning they will go into the next game for sure. Yes. And then they'll go into the shuffle yeah. to uh, come out if and when they do. And ah, so that's so really amazing that throughout this game, and you can play basically kind of a championship series and then the world series. You play as many games as you, you want. want. You could. That's the thing. And you fun. can kind of continually recruit people throughout this experience. And you're playing uh, like a seven game series in the world series. Best of, you know, first one to four uh, wins the world series. And so it's really amazing to kind of tactically build this deck over time. Yeah, because if you're playing, sometimes we'll, a lot of times we'll play a five game series, because mm -hmm. all the games are little mini games, essentially, mm -hmm. and then that will determine home field advantage for the World Series. Yeah. So it's a total of 12 games. And if we play a, all five games, all seven games, by the end of it, you have almost all new beefy cards. Yeah. So you've replaced all of your rookies, you've replaced most of your veterans with kind of these like famous players uh, from real baseball history. Yeah. Um, uh, cyborgs and naturals, which are just straight up humans, robots. You have this whole big well, mix. And the coolest thing is like so much of this game is about mind games. And because yeah. the thing is, if Mike gets this new beefy robot batter, like gonna hit 10 home runs, you know, crazy, something crazy, and it goes on top of his deck, I know that that card is coming up now. At some point. I know it's coming up in this game. He has no choice. You have to play all your cards. Yeah. So then it's that constant like, when's he gonna play it? When's he gonna play it? And then as you, you're kind of like, when do I play? Because I know he just bought a really big defensive card. Can I goad him Can into him using it, yeah, this play it early. so that like it, it just becomes this whole like trying to like t it's, you're playing chess. You're just like yeah. trying to like outmaneuver each other in these little games, and it's just so good. And you're constantly building that deck, building that deck, and then they go into the shuffle. So then you don't know when they're gonna come up. Yeah, and you're like, maybe man, up. he can have that card now. Yeah. It's just like, oh no, and then. Um, Oh shoot, I had another point I forgot I was gonna say. Well there's Continue. a cool thing of like you have these robots and there's certain That's cards that will negate all hits by a robot. Yeah. And there's certain there's certain things that are kind of, of trump cards for this type. There's cyborgs, robots, and naturals. Yeah, and cyborgs and are really so, good pitchers. Really good robots pitchers. are really good hitters. And yeah. then and naturals are kind of all over the place. Naturals are kind yeah. of all over the place, but the sort of fan favor. So they usually give you a lot of uh kind buying of buying power. power to get more free agents. Yeah, and people stuff. root for them because they're like, yes. Yeah. So it's cool. It's like, do I do you're always in the game within each minigame, and then as you buy cards, you are reacting directly to what your opponent is getting and trying to get stuff to negate what they are doing and give you something that they can't defend against. Yes. And the whole game is built off that. Each mini game and the entire game, and it's just one of the most tactical, amazing experiences, and it's 1v1, and you're just trying to just annihilate each other. And then it's like, you can do that with like a war game and have it be a war theme, but so cool as baseball. Yeah. They make a way to like actually replicate the game of baseball really the, well. The, the mechanics of the game are super interesting, where I don't think you have to enjoy baseball to like this game. Yes, because it's I just think sort it of helps if you like experience. baseball because you're yeah. like, oh, this is a nod. Because like a lot of the cards are like nods to baseball players. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is that person. This person's called Nolan something instead of, you know, it, yeah. it's it's just like it's one of those things. And so, but you don't actually have to like baseball to play. Cause the game, it's again, it's just so the mechanics are so cool. That is just awesome. But if you do like baseball, if you haven't played this, you need to play this game. You have to because it's just, so oh, it's so, so good. good. Every time we talk about it, every time we play it, I'm just reminded. Just like, it. it is so good, this game. Yeah. It's just incredible. It's ace. Yeah. That's why it's our number one deck builder. It's just it's so, good. so clean, so tactical, so specific, so focused. Yes. It's brilliant. And the way it, it, it's, yeah, the of world it sets boy. is just yeah. incredible. Yeah, and the world is cool. So cool. It's just so awesome. And that completes our top 10 deck builders, friends. Ooh. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, patrons, for selecting this top 10 for us to do. We uh, put out a poll. This is what won. Uh, the thing that came in second place is going to be the next top 10 we do. Uh, and so thank you again to the patrons for uh, helping us select 
uh, the top tens we're going to do. You can become a patron today as well to help participate in different polls about what we play on stream, what we do top tens on, all sorts of stuff like that. What we that. buy. What we buy, yeah. games that we buy. Uh, and so shout out to all the patrons below here that you see scrolling past. We really appreciate each yeah. and every one of you and your support, no matter uh, how you support us. And if you can't give us money, that's totally fine. If you could do us a huge favor, thumb this video up, leave a comment with your top 10 uh, deck yeah, builders. Yeah, your favorite ones. And then share this video on all your favorite forms of social media and with your friends and get the discussion going. It helps us out huge. You don't yeah. gotta spend money to be super good supporters and yeah. be a part of Team Bing Bong. But cool. uh, for those patrons, we do appreciate you. Thank you very much. Indeed, yeah. And just uh, put your favorite deck builders down in the comments below. It's a good discussion. It's a really great mechanic. If you haven't really delved in, there's so it's many new fun. games with it. It's just such a fun one that, that this is a this is a mechanic that you could do so much different stuff with and that's yeah. why it's so great we really 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 love it um yeah and that's gonna be it thank you all for being here we really really appreciate it uh um yeah and i think that's gonna be it my name is nick i'm mike we're the brothers murph and that's our top 10 deck builders have a great day bye